How you all doing? It's a very important episode. We're going to tackle, we're going to tackle huge concepts. We're going to talk about the duality of God versus the creator. Very powerful topic that everybody living in America, everybody living in America needs to hear this information here. Because I'm getting this from a spiritual place. I added a lot up, and I'm getting this from a very, um, this is spiritual knowledge that I'm laying on y'all right now. The fact is, you know, we know that there's something that, that we live in multiple realms at one time. We know that we, we're physical, we're spiritual, mainly, and we're, um, we're mental. You know, we have the mind, the brain, and everything. That's what connects the physical and the spiritual, is this, your mind, your brain, the things you think, your thoughts, your feelings, the things that's only tangible to you because you feel them. The things that's only tangible to you because you feel them. The things that you know innately inside you that is true. And things that you know that's inside you that are false. The things that you see the world uh, project to you that you know are false. You know, I'm not giving this video, um, you know, in the best places right now. I, this video comes with a heavy heart, you know. But I realize what, what, what's going on in America, what they call America, because this landmass wasn't called America. So what they call America, or what they put together, I put it that way. What they put together is this Americas that we live in now. And this is where a lot of the other continents and countries do their demonic deeds at. This is where they choose to let their demonic deeds take place. Um, they use Masonic organizations to, to, to bring together other organizations as an umbrella. You know, they use Eastern Stars and, and Masonic organizations to bring other organizations into the fold, like um, an umbrella. You know, it's an umbrella corporation that the government put in place. And really the government is always been a one world government you know they just had to get everybody on the same accord because you got people practicing certain rituals here in america on people who don't know that this is happening people don't know that this is happening and um they're subject to the things that's going on all around them at all times they're subject to certain rituals and things like that me myself I've been subject to rituals and things like that here in America a lot of times. And it's through my recollection and my memory and me being able to recount these things and me being able to add up the acts of my life that lets me know what's really going on here. If anybody out there really tie together all the acts of their life, everything that happened in their life, you know, and It'll be relatively easy to do if, if you don't have amnesia or, you know, um, something like that, something that will cause memory loss or whatever. If you still retain all of your memory, it will be really easy for you to just go meditate and just add up the acts of your life and see who did demonic things in your life. You know, because all of these thoughts and recollections and memories that we have, are for us. It is to guide us, to help us along the way, right? But also it's there because you gotta you gotta take that back to the creator. The creator needs those accounts of people who did you wrong in your life. The creator needs to know that you're able to recall these acts of things that, that people's done in your life. And um, you know. At times, it's people that love you. At times, it's people that you don't even know. A lot of times, it's people doing demonic things through people because 
the things that they do in your life is done to you through other folks. Now, the title of this podcast is going to be called uh, God, uh, God versus the Creator, because that's what's going on here. The things that they built up in America to, to seem as if it's godly aren't godly at all. The things that they built up in America to seem like it's of God, like the religion, like the money, the dollar bill and things of that. Those things are not of God. Those things are from the devil. All your religions, all of this stuff is just to put you in the state. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not shitting on anybody's religion, but I am shitting on the institution that is attached to a lot of times. You have these religious institutions that promote you believing in God and you believing in God is putting your faith in the outside source instead of putting it into the creator. The God is made by man, man made God. We all, we all give God the power. God that, that has dominion over this earth is not the God that we're supposed to worship. The God that we're supposed to worship is acting through us. And that is the creator. True God doesn't have a name. You can't call true God, God. All we could all we could think about the God. When I think about the true God, right? That's above all of this. That's not God at all. The name for that being or that entity or that power is 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 words that you could look up in a, in a dictionary. Basically, those are the only things you can call that that essence, that power, that that being, is uh, the creator. Um architect right who built all of this who made it possible for men to appoint gods who made it possible for men to appoint kings and things like this and that's what another person is taking control of when they control you when you allow a state a government a person a law enforcement officer um a religion when you when you when you when you listen to the past, the morning you listen to your intuition, that you allow another man, another person, become your God. That's merely what you're doing. You know, a lot of people give their whole livelihoods up that they work so hard for to the church instead of giving it to their to 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 their um to to their legacy, the ones they leave behind, and things of that nature, and it's. Is, is by no mistake that this is happening. America is where other people, other cults, other religions, organizations, this is where they brung the religion to, to put their belief systems on people who didn't believe like them. They wanted to indoctrinate an entire landmass of people, i.e. the Native Americans, the natives. I don't even want to call them Native Americans because there were there were there was no America when they got here. There was no Ameri when they got here. When they got here, this was not America's. This is what they made. This is what they called it once they got here. This was the emergence of all these different places. Once they got here and took this landmass and started their demonic practices. And we all know the demonic practices that they did on the Native Americans or the natives. That was here. It's hard to even stop saying Native American. It's hard to even stop saying it because so it's so deeply embedded into, you know, what you're what you're used to saying and things like that. So you have people from all different land masses that come here and do ritualistic demonic practices here. Anybody that's touting up a religion and things like that. And I'm not saying you don't have some that's good, some that's good, but anybody that's touting up religious beliefs over your own spiritual beliefs is touting up the devil, is touting up demons, demonic things. They practice demonic things. They're in line with demonic forces. This is what your Masonic, believe in uh, teachings are a lot of times 
This is what your um your Eastern stars believe a lot of times. They're just all different sets of cults that came to America to enslave, indoctrinate, um, and to reap the rewards, reap the rewards of doing demonic things on another piece of land that isn't theirs. You know, it, I had to think about this. I had to realize this. It's like, why would I do demonic practices to my own people in my own backyard, right? If I was Australian, why would I stay in Australia doing demonic things to my own people when I could go to a land far away and do the demonic practices that'll benefit, I guess, benefit them somehow, right? By doing it in a land far away than doing it on my own, in my own home. You know what I mean? It's the same thing for Africans. Africans will come to America, do all the demonic shit here, you know, um, scam people, do all the stupid shit here that they can get away with in America and send the, the, the rewards, reap the rewards here, get, get money and everything and send that back home. You know what I mean? I even believe that, um, when they show us commercials of people in Africa doing a, and going through certain things, like all the hunger and poverty and things like that, I even believe that some of that stuff is not true. All of that is propaganda to get you to believe that they're doing horrible. They're doing so bad. And so, you know what I mean? To, to make you send them a dime a day and stuff like this, you know, when really it's not that bad. America is, is a Ponzi scheme, basically. What we're living in now is a Ponzi scheme. If you have native blood in you at all, they would do demonic practices on you in your life. If you have, if you're from somewhere that they don't agree with, i.e. Cuba or something like that, and they're not in agreement with that country, they'll do the people that are here who have that bloodline of a Cuban bad. They'll choose to do you wrong in your life. They'll choose to have certain things happen in your life. And trust me, they control the things that happen. Sorry about that. Trust me, they control the things that happens in your life. Because when you're born, you're born in what? A hospital. Everybody's born in, this, in the hospital. And a hospital is an organization. You work for somebody. When you're working for somebody, you're working for what? An organization, a company. You know, it, it's the same wherever you look all around the board. You know, you put your time and energy out there for... For what? A lot of people aren't just putting their time and energy out there to get a message across, to wake people up, to to raise awareness to a problem that's going on that everybody's dealing with, that cultivated out of the evilness that's going on in today's society, in today's government system, in your streets, in your in your in your homes, in your neighborhoods, because like I said before, these demonic things and these demonic practices that happen to us happens through us. They happen through people that you love. These demonic practices happen through people you trust. You can be a person that will fight against demonic things happening in your life. You can fight so hard to not let certain things happen in your life. But come one way or another, it's still going to happen if they want it to happen. You have to be the strongest of the strong spiritually just to be able to notice what's going on out here, to notice the dichotomy that we're living in. And it's truly a dichotomy. When I say dichotomy, it's truly a dichotomy. You know, it's built up that way. It's built to, to tout the ones up, to spread propaganda to start certain trends and fads and things like that, to, to, to make certain music popular, to, to steal your ideas, you know, to steal from people, steal your ideas, steal your concepts, steal your spirituality, st steal your humanism. They dehumanize you to steal your manhood and your womanhood. They want you to be gay. They want you to be lesbian. They want you to be these type of things because all of these are demonic practices. All of these are demonic practices to sleep with another man or, or, or women to sleep with women. 
to turn to turn soulmates against each other. Because yeah, I, I did some research on that too. If you listen to one of my, because I did a video on soulmates and everything, how you have a connection, how Adam and Eve is not just Adam and Eve's story. Adam and Eve, all of us are Adam and Eve's. Realize that all of us are Adam's, Adam and Eve's. You have another half out there. You have another half out there. All you are is a masculine and a feminine. The Baphomet symbol. That's the demonic, the demonic picture that they gave to what you actually are. You are that Baphomet symbol, but you're not demonic in that form. You're not supposed to be demonic in that form. In that form, you're complete. When you meet up with your soulmate, your other half, your yin and yang, your duality, because there's a duality, spirituality, there's a duality to your soul. When you meet the other half of that masculine, feminine that's supposed to be there with you, for you, when you're supposed to grow together, that power is limitless. They have people out there that will try to steal that very essence from you. They have groups. They have, uh, uh, like I said, Masons and Eastern stars that will purposely keep soulmates away from each other because they'll know, they know what will happen if these two were to meet, if these two were to intertwine and, 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 and bear fruit and have children. They will have what you had, what you, what you call super fruit, like fruits that never been seen before that, that would be something different. That soul would be something different. Those children will be something different. This is how we got kings and queens and things like that. This is how we got um, um, people with, super, with, with, with basically superhuman abilities, born with superhuman abilities. It's because soulmates had bare fruit. When soulmates bear fruit, that's what you get. When soulmates bear fruit, you, you, you have a child like Jesus who you could build a religion around because the child is so in tune with who they are because their parents were soulmates. Their parents' souls were intertwined like this. A lot of people, a lot of people walking earth right now, a lot of people living life will never, ever, ever meet their soulmate because design for these, um, for these groups, for these, um, Groups, you know who I'm talking about. They're designed to actually keep soulmates away from each other. If you have a powerful soulmate, somebody who's a who's who amongst these groups and stuff like that, they can actually get in contact with their soulmate. But whether or not they want to stay with their soulmate, whether or not they want to use their soulmate for something, whether or not they want to fuck their soulmate's life up, whether or not they want to... um do whatever it is they want to do to you. You know, when your soulmate or your other half of your soul, your other half of who you, you know, your Adam and Eve thing, if, if, if they want to, if they're tied to a Masonic group or an Eastern star group, they can ruin your life. They could choose whether you become wealthy or not. They could choose whether you're going to be healthy or not. They could choose whether you're going to find a healthy marital partner, i.e. a wife or a husband. They could choose whether... Whether you're going to, uh, you know, uh, 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 do things in your life that you want to do, basically. And that's a sad thing to know that you have groups out here that can basically control your life, control the people in your life. If they control the people in your life, basically, ultimately, they control your life because they control people that dictates how you move about certain business, how you handle certain things in your life. You know, they control that type of stuff. I'm witnessing that. I'm witnessing that. I'm with I'm witnessing that a lot of things that happen that, that happened in my life was rituals done. I looked up my um, the numerology on my name. I was born August 20th, 
1986. And when I put that in on some websites, I get the number one. I get the number one. And when I look up, I have two children. Both of my children were born on the first day of their month. On the first day of their month. How odd is that? How odd is that? And then these same organizations and entities had my grandmother die on my youngest child's birthday on the first. And for some reason, I knew that this was going to happen. I didn't know like a long time before it happened. I knew the day before it happened. I knew a day before, a day or two before it happened, I said to myself, I didn't say it to myself, but it, it came to me. And all I could say was, please don't tell me my grandmother's going to pass away on my daughter's birthday. That's all I could say. That's all I can say, man. Seriously. That's all I can say. You know, what else can you say about having a recollection like that? When you have the spiritual knowledge, when you have such intuition that something like that comes to you, but yet still everybody around you still act like Nothing ever happened in your life. Everything is just happening because of misfortune, mere misfortune. Everything is happening because you made certain mistakes in your life. No, there are no mistakes. There are no mistakes. There are no misfortunes. These things happen because they want to play with your soul. They want to play with your spirit. They want to break you. Because this is where demons get to play with gods, just like the gods could play with them. This is where demonic entities play with people who have, has the soul, has the spirit of God in them. This is where demons could, could finally make mockery of God's greatest creation. I mean, of the creator's greatest creation. This is where gods get to make mockery of the creator's greatest creation and that's what you are you are the the creator's greatest creation so you have these demons here that walk around in bodies just like ours who choose to make mockery of you who try to become your god somehow in some way they want to be over you they want to have dominion over you in your life And the facilitators of that are these Masonic organizations and the Eastern Stars. It's an umbrella effect. They're in the government and everything. You know, they, they run everything around you. The only ones that aren't doing their bidding, and I can't even say the ones that, that aren't in the organizations because these people can actually influence people to do fucked up things in your life, right? People that you never thought would do something fucked up in your life. They can influence them to do fucked up things in your life, right? Because they're, they're operating with something that's not of this world. When you're operating in the spiritual man, you're operating with something totally different. That's like angels and aliens and shit like that. They're operating with something that's above what you can comprehend. That's why a lot of this information, certain people don't comprehend what I'm trying to say to them because they don't have that level of comprehension. That level of comprehension is not of this world. There's a lot of things that's not of this world that we deal with on a, on a, on a daily basis, on a regular basis. When you go to sleep, you're dealing with these things. When you wake up, you're dealing with these things. And you never understand. You, it's, you don't understand because you're made not to understand. 
or you may not to understand because you just simply don't want to understand. A lot of people just don't want to understand. They don't want to understand things that scares them. They don't want to understand things that hurt them. They don't want to understand things that they just can't, can't comprehend. A lot of people just don't want to understand it. But I understand what's going on. I understand that this is my journey that I had to take to realize all these things. To raise awareness. To raise awareness for you. To raise awareness for me. To raise awareness for my children. And us as as us living in this time that we're living in today. We got to realize that this is the end of days. Whether we like it or not, you're living in the last days. This is why you have people having different experiences. Some of those people having these type of experiences will never get to bring this to you. They'll never get to speak of this because they'll, one, either take their own life, two, do something crazy and, and call somebody to take their life, or they just go out of their fucking mind and get thrown in jail or thrown in a nut house somewhere or taking medication and taking all types of drugs and shit like that so they can't have a clear recount on what's going on right now. What's going on in life? What's going on in the world that we're living in today, in today's society, man? It's, it's sad, but that's the way it is. It's sad, but that's the way it is. You know, you got people dying from all types of things all the time who who has this type of knowledge or who, who's been through and been down this road. And you'll never get these accounts from them because either they haven't put together this stuff themselves or because the information that they have is such a threat to the, the organization, to the powers that be, to the ones running this whole monopoly on everybody, that they eliminated, that they took them out, they made a target. I've been made a target. I have, you know what I mean? There's no, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. Anytime a person could go through all of this shit in their life and nobody, everybody turns a blind eye to it. Nobody gives a fuck, you know what I mean? The system won't help you. That's because the system is part of the problem. Certain people won't help you. That can clearly help you. That you've helped. That's a part of the problem. You know, I'm not, I'm not the problem here. I'm trying to merely solve a problem. In fact, I'm living in my purpose because what I'm supposed to discover, what I'm supposed to realize and recognize before we leave, before any of us expire here, these are the things you're supposed to recognize in your life. You're supposed to have clear accounts and recollections of all the wrongdoings that ever been done to you in your life. So you can take those back to your creator. Yeah, the creator knows all, but how is he going to hold the ones responsible for these acts, right? How is he going to hold them responsible if you never realize who's responsible for this type of thing? How is he going to hold them responsible for the things, that, for the harsh and heinous things that they do in your life if you were made to take your own life? Because if you take your own life, then you're wrong, right? You're wrong once you do that. That's one of the greatest sins, to, to abort whatever mission it is that you want, that the creator puts you on, because you are on a mission. If you're living life in today's, in the, in the world period, you're on a mission. You're on a mission for what? Information, discrimination, gather intel, report back, right? That's the mission you're on. But once, once the life is gone out of you, and if it's done too early, and if it's done by your own hand or your own doing, you've aborted the mission that God, that not, not God, let me, gotta be careful with that word, that the creator, that the architect puts you on, appointed you here for. You know, I'm, I'm sad to say, you know, with a heavy heart, I say this as well. I got a brother that aborted his mission. You know, he took his own life or so we think. So we think he took his own life. You know, far as we know, 
you know, that's what they say. He took his own life. But I don't believe that my brother would ever do nothing like that. Not a happy-go-lucky, not the type of person that he was. I believe that these people, that these organizations, through my family, through my friends, through people that I loved and trusted, through acquaintances, through people I worked for, I, I believe that they also tried to get me to take my life on many different occasions just by the emotional distress that I've been having, that I had in my past. I'm still having now. The things that I'm going through now, a lot of a lot of men would turn and do crazy things to somebody else or to themselves. But you can't do those type of things. You have to you have to be above that type of that that type of mentality. That that way of thinking, that train of thought. You have to always be above that and stay true to your mission. Living your purpose. If this is my purpose to let you know this information. And so be it, I'm here. So be it, I'm here. So I started off this podcast by saying this is going to be a powerful podcast, man. This one in particular. Because, man, we, we, a lot of us, you know, and this is no, no slight to the foreigners. You know what I mean? I love the Chinese food. I love the Mexicans. I love all the foreigners who's coming to America. I love the Africans. I love the Australians. I love the Chinese people, the Russians, all of you, all of you are human beings at the end of the day. But a lot of us come to America. A lot of other human beings from other land masses come here to this continent to do harm to this continent, to do harm to the people of this continent. At first, I thought that this was like some ambiguator. I, I always get that wrong, a little tongue-tied, that word a little tongue-tied. But I thought that this was like a meeting place where where people from all over the, all over the world could come and, uh, and merge with each other and have children and, you know, uh, black get to be with white and things like that. But then I started to think, you got black and whites on, on every continent. In every country, you have black and whites. You have black and white Africans. You have black and white um, um, Australians. You got black and white Chinese people. You got black and white Mexicans. You got black and white Cubans. You got black and white anything you want to think of. Puerto Ricans, all of them come in different shapes, colors, sizes, ethnic backgrounds, and all of that shit. So it's not about the mixing and amalgamating. It's about them getting here, them, them practicing whatever they want to practice, them um, gaining whatever monetary value, uh, them having a business and things like that, and sending it back home. All of that is a front for the spiritual things that they do when they get here. When they get here, a lot of them um, are here to do damage to this land, to the people who are native to this land. A lot of them are here for that. A lot of them are, are here to keep you fat. A lot of them are here to keep you um, under the thumb. A lot of them are here to kill you in some way, shape, shape or form, to make your life harder, to do demonic practices on other people that's not of their same people. If you are recognized that, if, if it's recognized that you're not their people, then yeah, they don't give a fuck about you really. All that Black Lives Matter bullshit. All the Asian Lives Matter bullshit. All of that is bullshit. Because black lives come from all over the place. There's Asians, there's black Asians, there's white Asians, there's Asian Asians. It's all, every landmass is already mixed up. They come here to do demonic practices here. Other places, yeah, they got other places where they facilitate um, all types of rituals and things that they do. But they come here to perform rituals and 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 to lay claim uh, lay claim to something that's not theirs. I e you. They come here to enslave you, as many of you that they could get to enslave. Then they're doing their job. As many of you, as, as different branches that that's appointed different jobs 
as long as they're oppressing you, whatever branch it is, whatever organization it is that they're made to oppress you under, as long as they got you there and they, they got you working and they taking your time and they taking your energy by any means necessary, they're doing their job. They're appeasing the demonic forces of their gods, of wherever they're from. There are many gods. There's but a few creators. There's but a few architects, but there are many gods. Demigods. I don't want to say demigods, but there are many gods from all over the place. And they come here. Because you can go to a lot of places, but you won't see them believing in anybody else's God. You won't see a lot of places believing in anybody else's religion. The only where, only place you get away with that type of thing is America. America is the only place you can come to and get away with having so many religions under one umbrella, indivisible, under God, for which it stands, for liberty and justice for all, right? That's the slogan. That's the, that's the, the, um, the theme, right? But you go other places, you look over overseas and other places, I'm not going to say no places in, in particular, Palestine and Russia and all this other type of stuff. When you look over there, when you look at Jerusalem and, and the other place, and you know, when you look at all these different places, they have wars, religious wars over, over, over you coming there and, and worshiping your God in their synagogue, in their town, in their... You know, they'll kill whole families just because you believe in a different religion than them. You're worshiping a different God than them. That's what this is all about. America is the only place where you can bring multiple gods, multiple religions, and, and, and have everybody worshiping, and have everybody from, from all over the place worshiping. And I mean, when you think about it, you would think it's a harmonious thing. You would think it's... it's it's a good thing, you know, and I mean to each his own, but at the same time, is it really good for the natives? Is it really good for this land to have so many gods in one place? We could say that there's one true God. I do believe there's one true creator. When I was a little bit uh, simpler minded, I want to say, you know, spiritually wise, because I'm still a little simple, <laughs> but, uh, when I was a little bit more simple spiritually wise, it's like I could say, yeah, there's one God, one true God. You know what I mean? That's that's what Muslims believe, that there's one God, that all of us has the same God. We're just calling him by different names and, you know, um, speaking different languages and things like that. And that's, you know, I, I want to say that that's that's a, that's a good mindset to have so you could uh, put away some of the division that religion brings because religion divides people better than nothing else. Right. But at the same time, if you believe in a God period, you have to realize that man made God, man made God, all your religious books, all the texts is written by man for man, for his own profit, for his own protection, for his own, you know, um, for his own belief, you know, to have you under control, to have you under that spell. Because who created God? You know, everything, everything is created from somewhere. So who created the God? The creator created his greatest creation when he created you, right? I.e. you created your God. You created your God. Instead of giving Instead of giving your praise to your creator, my fault, that's better. Instead of giving your praise to your creator, you give your praise to a different God. And that's what I'm talking about. That was that was a clear example of what I'm talking about. You know I'm down here, I'm doing a podcast, I'm doing this and that, right? I'm trying to get my point across on my podcast so I can bring awareness or raise awareness to a certain thing that's going on and you turn the lights off on me. That's done because the devil works through people. 
the, the, the demons works through people. You know, they work through us. So a lot of times a person won't even know that they're being used to do something demonic or something wrong to another person, and they'll just do it, not understanding. That's them not having that same spiritual awareness that you have. That's them not having the same intuition or farsight that you have to see what's going on around you. That's all that's, that's, all that's about. But nonetheless, the podcast goes on. sad man a lot of a lot of people a lot of people get hindered from what they want to what what their purpose is in life a lot of people get hindered trying to do their purpose in life by other people that would benefit it's crazy because other people would benefit from you doing well at whatever it is that you do. People you love, people you care about, um, they would benefit from you living in your purpose, you doing what you got to do. And them not knowing, they'll try to do things to stop you or or, um, or, or block your way from doing it. what it is that you're supposed to do with your life. And it's not their fault. It's because you have these forces that place that 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 works against us through us that will work against us through others I'm trying to get this light right i don't like too much light let me see oh that's actually nice with the light like that okay Put my hair a little slick back okay look like i got a v-neck on though <laughs> Look like I got a V-neck on in this joint. Uh, oof. Yeah, but man, that's what it is. At the end of the day, man, you gotta you gotta stay aware. You gotta stay strong. Understand that the adversity that's out here is not adversity at all. That, those are demonic forces that's trying to go against. Somebody's trying to do, trying to do the creator's will, trying to live in their purpose. At all times, the devil is at work. The devil is at work through other people around you and everything. That's why they say you got to kind of try to be around somebody like-minded. You know, that way you can get things done because you're you're on the same accord. You know, but it's been times where I've been around like-minded people, you know, in trying to do music or trying to do this or trying to work towards a common goal. And even with those people, man, if they're tied into if they're tied into whatever organization, the Masons or the Eastern Stars or whatever, they'll sit up there and just have you spinning your wheels and have you helping, helping them with, with, with their stuff and them not helping you with your stuff at all. And that's what they're put here for, these cultist type people. That's what they put here for. They, they're put here to, to complete their task and to have you not complete yours. You know, you could identify who these people are in life just by how they feel, the energy that they give you. You know, a lot of us look at these people and just be like, damn, you know, all that's fucked up. But they're just doing their job. They're doing their job. They're supposed to try to stop you from doing whatever it is that you're doing. Because that's their job. That's their protocol. That's what's given to them to do. They've been given that protocol before they even met you. That's what you got to realize. A lot of times, a lot of these things that's happening, man, is because people were given protocols to, to treat you this type of way before they even met you. A lot of these people was given protocols to be this certain way before they even met you. Their personality, their characteristic, their persona, before they even met you, they was like that. So you you gravitating towards <clears throat> towards them or, 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 or trying to do something and accomplish a thing and, and running into those type of person and or people didn't happen by coincidence. That that happened for a reason. It didn't it wasn't by mere chance. It happened. You ran into that type of personality or person or character because you needed an obstacle that you had to overcome. So you ran into this person or this happened in your life because you needed an obstacle. 
They wanted to give you an obstacle. And they gave you one. You know, once they give you an obstacle, it's like you got to you gotta mentally be able to get over that hurt hurdle. Because a lot of times you can't, um, a lot of times you can't just force your way out of a situation. A lot of times you have to really elevate out of a situation. You know, we're all in this maze together. And this maze is like you can get to the to the to the cheese. You can get to the center core of the maze, right? You can figure out everything about life all the way through this maze and get to the center of it and realize that you're still in that maze. To realize that there's no doors to, to leave out of, of this maze. The only way to get out of that maze is by elevating. By elevating through that maze. You have to elevate out of that maze. And the only way is with your spirituality. The only way to get out of that is with your own spirituality. To gain, to gain wisdom and to gain sight into what's actually happening in your life to realize that the things that's happening in your life is not mere coincidence. The things that's happening to your life, in your life, through your life is because it's been ordained. It's been, it's been given. If you're a person that wakes up and realize this is happening, you'll notice it clearly. And once you notice it, you can't unnotice it. Once you know, you can't unknow. It's a gift and a curse. It's a gift and a curse to realize these things. It's a gift and a curse to, to know this type of knowledge. You know what I mean? I watch I watch uh, intelligent brothers. I watch intelligent brothers like Cat Williams. I watch Cat Williams on Joe Rogan. And um, Cat Williams is just the most knowledgeable guy that, God damn, he... He he mind I, my mind was blown. Like just listening to him helped me figure out some things. Helped me put together some things. And it's just like that. When I listen to Billy Carson, you know what I mean? Listening listening to, to men with such knowledge helps me put together a lot. Helps me see what's going on. Helps me um allows me to 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 not allows me, but it gives me inspiration to make more videos to, to make more content you know what I mean more more insight on what I'm actually dealing with you know what I mean and you got to realize that you know it's, it's not an easy task bringing you this type of information especially in the circumstances that I'm bringing this information to you in you know my circumstances is dire right now I really need some help you know, I really need help with with um, getting out of my environment, for one, getting out of America, you know, not even out of America, you know, because this is native to me. I'm native to this land. I don't want to leave this land, but I do need to be in a more, in a different place because the city is against me. And it's not the people of the city. I'm not saying the people of the city are against me. I'm saying that the organizations are against me. Anytime they don't help when you're having trouble like this. Because this girl, this woman, um, you know, that 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 did so much crazy. I mean, and there's, and there's more women than just one. And there's more men than just one in my life. But one in particular who did foul shit in my life, who stole property from me, who, who, who cost me a lot in my life. And I'm not just talking about my mother. I'm not just talking about other women that I encounter. I'm not just talking about her mother. Um, I'm talking about her as well, too. I believe that, that was my soulmate. And she met me for a reason, because she wanted to fulfill, fulfill some, some demonic ritual that she was doing. And she fulfilled that ritual through me. She fulfilled that ritual by having me around her and, and, and performing demonic rituals on me, to me, while I was sleeping, while I was awake, tried to make me, uh, you know, take my life, you know, tried, 
tried to down me in many ways, um, tried to poison me, you know what I mean? Stole from me so she could try to uh, get me in prison, try to set me up, you know what I mean? Even guide me to go in other places. Like all of this stuff is not no mere coincidence. You know, all of these things are not mere coincidence, man. They will set you the fuck up. They will set you up with a spouse that don't really love you at all, that don't give a fuck about you, that'll just use you for your sperm or whatever. And then that's it. You know what I mean? They will set you all the way the fuck up, you know, and that's what the Eastern Stars and the Masons and whatever organizations and entities that's at work here, that's what they do because they got a demonic agenda to fill and they fill it by hurting you. You know, they, they, they fulfill their duties by hurting you and they're awarded freedom. They're awarded whatever they need to, to, to complete the mission, drugs, money, cars, houses, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is they need or want, that's what they get to complete their mission, to do their demonic works. You know, it's all about propaganda, man. You got to think, Britain, uh, uh, over, in, over, in, over, over, over in England, right? They got schools that teach people how to manipulate other people through television, radio, and things like that. And what do we consume here in America? Television, radio, FaceTime, we all on Instagram, we all on YouTube and everything like that. Is that way because they want to know how to, 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 to control you. They want to know how to monetize you, you as, as being a native of this land. They want to know how to monetize you. So they figure out what colors you like. They figure out what type of music you want to hear. It goes so deep to... They can control the type of music that you want to hear. They control what you create because if you like to hear a certain music and if they make you like a certain music or like a certain lifestyle, then all that's, all that's, all they got to do is give that to you on a video or in your music. And then that'll influence you to make music like that because you know that will sell. That's all it's about. All it's about is controlling native people. If you're native to this land, when they come to this land, their whole mission, their whole control, their whole, their whole agenda is to keep their foot on the necks of the people of this land. Why you think Native Americans have a reserve? I said this in a, in a video yesterday. Why you think Native Americans have a reserve? Because they're going extinct. Why are they going extinct? Because they've been tricked, bamboozled, hoodwinked, run them up, run astray. You know, the trail of tears. You know, they, they didn't go, they didn't go to these reservations or they or they they four or five, they had their their mothers and fathers didn't go to those reservations, the happiest of people. You know, you got you got young natives that was born on those reservations that can live a happy life because they don't know what their mothers and fathers and their grandmothers and grandfathers went, went through going there. The only people you put, the only species you put on reservations are species that's going extinct. When you're a species that's going extinct, you put them there to, 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 to at least have a piece of what once were, what once was, you know, a landmass. So this way you could look at them. You could, you could, it's almost like a zoo. You could send people there like, ah, oh, here are the people that used to, this used to, this used to be their land. They're, they're the natives, but now it's our land. Now this is America. Now this is our home. You know, there's no more of them. You know what I mean? This is the last of the Mohicans. No pun intended. <laughs> And that's probably what they're saying. The pun is intended when they say it. The pun is definitely intended when they say it. Last of the Mohicans, god damn. I looked on the uh, on the join the other day on Facebook, right? I'm on a Facebook group, and it's called the Native Americans or something. It's, it's a Native group or whatever. And somebody posted a picture of Pocahontas, a movie, Pocahontas, that's supposed to be coming out in 2025. And the Pocahontas was white. And you could clearly tell that this is a Caucasian 
Pocahontas. I'm like, what the fuck? So I click on it because it's weird. It's out of place. I noticed that in the group, you had people making mockery of natives. That's so, And I put it in the group chat. I said, oh, so this group is created to mock Native Americans. This, this group was created basically by $5 Indians, by fake-ass Native Americans, fake-ass natives who, who mock real Native Americans, who mock real natives of this land. That's what they're doing. If you have native blood in you, if you have blood that they that they deem a threat, when you're of a certain uh, legacy or or, or, or or when you're from a certain heritage or lineage, that's the word I'm looking for. When you're from a certain lineage, they will make your people a mockery out of. They will make a, a mockery out of you. I know for one, they don't like Cubans. They do not like Cubans for whatever fucking reason they don't. And you got people who run around here and, and, and that'll pretend they're Cuban. Like DJ Khaled, I don't think he's Cuban at all. You know, matter of fact, I know he's not Cuban. But a lot of a lot of people would, for some reason, call him Cuban or whatever. Or, or like, like he has some type of... There's a lot of people who run around here and act like they're Native American and they're not Native American at all. You know, America, America is a really sick place where they'll let one race of people pretend to be another race of people because they want to exterminate or, or, or eradicate the real people of that lineage, of that heritage, of that race. They want to destroy them. They want to keep a foothold on them because they know that in your blood is royalty. And once you were on top of them, you know, when, when, when the creator created you, you were, not were, but you are still the greatest of, of the creator's creation. So what they do is they want to act as your God. And there's no better way to act as your God than to make your God, than to be the one to, cre to create your God. And this is what they do. They create your God. You know, they created your God for you. And a lot of us just go right along with that, you know, and it's a sad thing. You know, I, I'm i still researching and I'm still studying, you know what I mean? All this information that's coming to me is spiritual knowledge, emotional knowledge. My my recounts, my, my, my recollections on what I went through and, and what I'm realizing, you know, and I'm just bringing it to you. So y'all could know, y'all could, you know, wisen up and y'all could get, y'all could get free, man. Because at the end of the day, that's what we all want to be. We all want to be free. The ignorance is, is, is crazy. You know I'm down here doing the podcast, but yeah, and still you got somebody up here screaming. Kids and all that. We need to be in a space where we create, man. Seriously. That's crazy. Anytime I'm trying to create something, I, anytime I'm trying to create something, it's just this level of you're not going to get it done going on all around me. Anytime I'm trying to create something, there's a level of you're not going to get it done all around me. But nonetheless, I'm going to keep creating Nonetheless, I'm going to keep creating because once you create something, you can always go back and make it better. Once you create something, you can always go back and make it better. You know what I mean? It's just like children. Sometimes you have a child, right? And you might not be able to teach that child everything to make them the best person that they could be. But once you learn yourself, you can always go back and teach them to make them that much more better. If they're willing, willing to accept the knowledge now. You know what I mean? If they're willing to accept that knowledge, hopefully you catch them before they reach an age where they're still willing to listen to you and, and talk to you and things of that nature. Then you can always teach them to be better than they were before. Right? Because that's that's the journey that we all own. We all own that journey to become better than we once were before. Right? The more we grow, the more we learn, the more we know, 
the better we could be, you know, as spiritual beings, as people that's trying to live in our purpose, the better we could be for, for, for them and us, right? And that's what it's about, man. It's about that type of connection right there. It's about constantly elevating. It's about it's about constantly working on things that you create. Because once you create something, it's not the end. You could always go back and tweak and revamp. I got books right now that I gotta that I gotta rewrite. Not rewrite, but I gotta uh, do the fonts differently and take some words out that was put there because of the font that I was using or the uh, template that I was using on the books. You know, I got um, podcasts where I'm trying to learn to speak more fluently and things of this nature by by expanding my vocabulary in a lot of ways and by putting together thoughts that go together, but they're not quite fitting. Pieces that don't quite fit, you got to make sure that you're given the right information, that you're receiving the right information. So even with the podcast thing, I might put out an episode of my podcast that ties with another episode of the podcast because some information that I have now, I didn't have then. So it's all a, it's all a, it's all a puzzle that you put together, really, even with music, you know, even with the music, it's like, I don't have a producer or anything. And I'm just doing all of this all on my own at different times, mind you, like I might have time enough to, to put down half the song and then come back in and try to redo the song and try to produce it better and things like that. And sometimes you don't get it right because you have distractions all around you. But once the song is created, you could always listen to it come back to it, make it better, re-release it, things of that nature. You know what I mean? It's, I got a lot of music that I got to re-release, just like I got books that I got to redo. I got books that I'm writing right now that I can't finish because I can't find the time to. You know, I, I have the time to, but at times you get distracted from doing the things that you have to do or that you want to do with your life. You know, just got to live in your purpose. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. You know, living in your purpose is never perfect right away. It's not, it's, it's a rough thing because you're not used to living this way. You're not used to doing these things that you're now accustomed to doing. You're trying to gain that muscle memory at doing so many things and on, on your, on your, on your limited schedule or on your busy schedule, whatever it is. But it's like, you have to do it nonetheless, or you won't feel fulfilled. You won't feel purposeful. You won't feel like you won't feel like you. We all just want to feel like us. We all just want to feel like we're doing the things that we were meant to do in our life, man. I got people on there on online, you know, on Instagram or whatever. Every time I bring something up or I mention something, you know, I got some kind of come back right there. I want to say this on the podcast to anybody who wants to uh, refute things that I'm saying, right? It's all about perspective. My perspective may be different from your perspective, but it's all about perspective. Mm -hmm. It's all about propaganda. Maybe you're in my inbox. Maybe you're replying to things that I'm saying, because you're a part of the propaganda who want to pe keep people dumb to certain things that want to keep people under under the under the spell of the demons that's that's out here working maybe you're a part of these organizations or entities and you don't want me to shed a light on the demonic practices that you guys do you know mm -hmm. um on 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 all the things you know to be honest with you at a lot of these meetings and things like that I just really think that they have, I, a lot of people think that they're in there doing some demonic things and stuff, and they are, but I, I do believe that they're just talking about how they're going to allocate drugs, how they're going to allocate money, how they're going to guide people's lives and things like that. I do believe that these organizations are just here to run your fucking life. And you know who I'm talking to. You know who I'm talking about. You know, and I, last video I said, there's no, there's no slight to the people involved in these organizations, right? But the ones that know that they're doing wrong, the ones that know that they're hurting people, the ones that they know that 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 know the work that they're doing is fucked up, is definitely slight to you. It's definitely slight to you. You know what I mean? It's it is what it is. 
I'm not a part of the organization. So fuck your organization. If you're running around here and you're touting up God trying to do demonic things under the guise of being good and being righteous and things of that, fuck your organization. Fuck your church. Fuck whomever you call God and all that type of shit. Because what you're doing is wrong. What you're doing is clearly demonic and it's seen, it's felt, it's heard by many. By many, and I'm here to pass that on to the Creator. I'm here to experience the things that I experience and go through the pain and hurts that I go through, so the Creator would know what's going on. You know what I mean? Even though the Creator know what's going on, but the Creator need to know that He got a soldier that's strong enough to actually bring this out to the forefront. Point blank, period. I'm a soldier for the Creator. I'm a soldier for the Architect. I'm a record keeper. I'm going to find out all these things and I'm going to keep bringing them to the masses because there's people out here that needs to hear this. There's people out there out here that deserves to hear this type of information so they know what monster they're dealing with, what type of demon they're dealing with. You need to know this type of information, point blank, period. You need to know it. You know what I mean? All of our lives are being guided in a way and you need to know how to combat whatever they're trying to guide you to, whatever they're trying to do to you, whenever they get you to join a gang, whenever they get you to do some heinous shit, whenever they get you to, to, to start sleeping with men or whenever they get you to try to, you know, a woman to sleep with a woman and all this type of stuff, when they get you to do these type of things that you know are wrong, that are against the creator, right? When they, when, and I'm not, I'm not going against anybody because I want to put that out there. I'm trying to blow the fuck up. So I ain't trying to shit on nobody's sexuality. <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm not trying to shit on nobody's sexuality. I'm not trying to shit on the way nobody lives, right? But this is just what I see, what I'm previewed to. The creator put beings here, man and woman. You have man and woman. I'm going to tell you what I believe uh, the whole LGBTQ thing is. A lot of us out here are hurt because we never meet our soulmate, right? Because I, I was, early I was talking about that Baphomet symbol. Many of us know the Baphomet symbol has a male and a female aspect to it. It has titties, dick and balls, and a pussy. Come on. That's clearly a male and female. It has wings and has horns and shit. So it's, it's, it's to show you the demonic, I mean, not the demonic, it's there to, it was there to look, appear as demonic. But what is there to show you is the duality in everything that you are. What is there is to show you that you are good and evil. You are feminine and masculine. You are angel and demon, right? You have to have this fusion going on. This fusion going on. It's always a fusion of two, cre of, of two creatures, of two creations, right? Because we're different. Men and women are totally different. But we do have an equal and opposite, right? We do have an equal and opposite part of our soul, i.e. a soul mate, right? That is different from us. Your soul mate will never be another man. And for a woman, your soul mate will never be another woman. But what happens is a lot of us lose our soul mates, right? A lot of us, either our soul mates died, either our soul mates are you know, something, something crazy, something that we, you know, something, either for some reason we don't get with our soulmate. So what that is, is your soulmate is probably attached to an organization and they don't want you to be attached to another woman, a jealous soulmate. Because if your soulmate dies, your soulmate is somewhere in limbo waiting for your soul to return to their soul so that way they can re-enter into whatever life there is next, the next level of life, Right? So they try to get you to, 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 to not be with another woman because you might have a jealous soulmate. So if your other, let's say you're a man and you got a soulmate who's, you know, who, who's deceased or whatever, they might not want to see you with another woman. That's a jealous soulmate. So they'll push you towards men and it's vice versa. If you're a woman and your soulmate died or passed away or whatever, they might push you towards other women. And it's not like 
it's not like you will feel somebody pushing you to gravitate. It's just something in you. It's a soulmate. They're attached to you. They, that's, they can send you thoughts. They can send you emotions. They can send you all that type of shit. So your soulmate could just embed the thought. They could make you think, oh, maybe I should do this. Oh, maybe I should do that. When really you ain't supposed to do that because it's not of your creator. It's not, it's demonic, basically. Mm -hmm. It's something that you're not supposed to do. You know what I mean? So you got to be mindful of the things you do and don't be weak and caught up into into the hype. Don't get caught up into the, into the bullshit, man. That's my time. This has been my episode. I'll get off into more things later as I come into more information and research. Please go out there. Enjoy the music of mine that you like. Enjoy the books that you want to read of mine. It's not long books. I'm sure somebody like Cat Williams can read one of my books like that. I'm sure many of you can read one of my books like that. Listen to my music. Enjoy the ones you enjoy for right now. I'm coming out with more better, more bigger stuff in the near future. You know what I mean? So please just, um, you know, stay aware. Stay aware and praise your creator. Praise you. Praise yourself. Praise the true and living creator that created you. And know that you are the creator's greatest creation. And anybody trying to make you believe otherwise is demonic. This has been the episode of God Concept. I'm your host, Mr. Pagan. Mr. Pagan. Just in case anybody get it wrong, somebody called me Pagan the other day. I was like, Pagan? Whoa. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the word Pagan, but my last name isn't Pagan. It's Pagan. So, please, have a great night. Enjoy your day. Peace.